I'm back in South Korea and I'm on this particular prospect because it's been known since the 1970s and early on it was reported as being a porphyry copper type system. There was a good deal of argument about that or whether it was or it wasn't, so I thought I'd come here and try and figure it out for myself. And sure enough, 200 metres up the creek on the first Travis, we found a swarm of bee veins. They have that granular saccharoidal quartz texture. This one has the classic centre line in the middle. The walls of the veins are slightly wiggly but parallel to each other and there's several generations of veins cross-cutting each other at different angles. All of those characteristics are absolutely typical of B-type veins. There's quite a bit of drilling and petrological work done in the past and it all focused on a granodiorite pluton that's in the middle of the prospect. This granodiorite body is about a kilometre long and a couple of hundred metres wide. So it's about the right size for a classical porphyry intrusive and most of the historical reports suggested that this granodiorite was the one causing the mineralisation. But it didn't look quite right to me. There were no mention of any B veins and the equigranular texture of the granodiorite didn't fit with a normal porphyry mineralisation system. And most of the drill reports suggested that when they hit the granodiorite, the grade dropped off, which is the opposite of what you would expect. So I was quite surprised to find this swarm of bee veins in an outcrop just a few metres from the boundary of the granodiorite on the first day in the field. But a few minutes later, we found an outcrop just over there that knocked the granodiorite out of the race. In this outcrop, you can see lots of these lovely bee veins in the metasediment here. And very fortunately, there's a zone of the granodiorite here and the contact runs along there. But as you can see, the bee veins come to the contact and they're truncated right there, all of them. And on top of that, the alteration in the metasediments is secondary biotite magnetite, that's potassic fasces, and the alteration in the granodiorite is chlorite epidote pyrite, which is propylytic fasces. So here's a little bee vein here in the metasediment, and this fine black speckly colouring in the surrounding rock is secondary biotite and a little bit of magnetite, and there's both magnetite and quartz in the vein as well. See, that's quite magnetic. That's really typical of a B vein in a potassic alteration zone. So here you can see the granodiorite with some propylytic alteration. Most of the mafic minerals, biotite and hornblende, have been converted to chlorite, and some of the feldspars have gone to this bright apple green epidote. And there's a little bit of pyrite scattered amongst it as well. If this intrusive was driving these veins, you'd expect to see these veins just as dense or more dense in the intrusive and a similar alteration either side. But since the veins are cut by that contact, we know that this intrusive must be younger and that explains why it has a different alteration facies. So now I know that this probably is some kind of porphyry style mineralization system and that this granodiorite is probably nothing to do with it. Since we know that this granodiorite probably isn't the culprit, we know we need to be looking for another type of intrusive. And that intrusive we know probably isn't far away because those type of bee veins, particularly in that kind of density, very rarely get more than a few tens of metres outside the contact of the causative intrusion. And when we find that intrusion, it's likely to have a whole swarm of its own internal bee veins, strong potassic alteration, and hopefully some nice stockwork gold copper molybdenum mineralization. The lesson here is that no matter how long something has been studied, no matter how many drill holes there are into it, they can always have the story wrong. And when something doesn't look quite right, the answer is go and have a look at it figure out what veins cut what, what's the parogenesis, and what the alteration system is doing over the top of it all. That will tell you the story, and that will lead you to the ore deposit.